for them to protect their rights after Brexit. The government is offering migrants who've been living here for at least five years settled status after Brexit. They'd have to apply for it, but it would essentially give them indefinite leave to remain. And they'll be entitled to public services and benefits. They would also have the right to appeal to the UK courts if their application was rejected. But campaigners say it leaves them without any protection if there's no deal on Brexit with the EU. Our reporter Catherine Carpenter joined them on their mission to Brussels. An early Euro star to Brussels, a journey becoming all too familiar for members of the three million campaign group. Between them, Costanza and Gudrun have lived in London for nearly 60 years. They don't want the settled status the government is offering after Brexit and are presenting their alternative to the EU's negotiators today. We are hoping that this is a solution that, that can actually be accepted by both parties. We will soon be arriving at Brussels media station. Arriving in Brussels, there's a sense of urgency to changing the UK's position. It is a move away from rights that people have established, rights that people have enjoyed for many, many years, and then converting those into a form of immigration status. Now, academically, that sounds, you know, uh, abstract and odd, but the consequences are seismic for people. They will go, in some instances, from living a normal life, enjoying rights that they have, to being illegal in the UK. Just last week, the government sought to offer reassurance, saying that applications for settled status wouldn't be turned down on minor technicalities, that there'll be an appeals process, and that safeguarding citizens' rights is its top priority. But the negotiators will return here in the next few weeks, and the fear amongst these campaigners is that there is so much pressure to make progress that the details, the nitty-gritty about their future, will either be glossed over and dealt with at some point in the future, all rush through. <laughs> Backup has arrived though from Germany, France and Spain. Londoners now living in mainland Europe who are equally worried about their futures. My name's Jane Golding, I'm a lawyer and I live in Germany but I'm originally from Kingston. What are your main concerns? My main concerns is as a working person, keeping my rights of free movement to be able to work across the EU. I've worked in four different countries already as a lawyer and I want to be able to keep those rights. Are you nervous yes, yes. No. no. Well, we've been here many times before, but we're just hoping that they'll listen to us now because it's the crunch time in the negotiations and we really need to be heard. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Nice to see you again. Finally, it's time for their meeting with Sabina Vayend, Michael Barnier's deputy. We're allowed to film a brief hello, but she doesn't give interviews. Well, they've been inside the meeting for well over an hour now, and it's hardly surprising when you consider that this is the list of things they've got to discuss. Basically, they'll be asking Sabina Vayen to consider a special EU-UK treaty, giving them all the same rights as they have now, but accessed through a much simpler registration process. So, meeting over, did she listen? It's good to uh, keep going at it, and I think we, we agree, they agree with us, that we're not within touching distance of an agreement on citizens' rights. That's interesting, because the UK government has just told us again today, when we rang them for a statement, that they think they are in touching distance. In That's our... not the view here, and it's not our view either. Mixed messages then from the two sides, but there's hope here that they have at least been listened to. Catherine Carpenter, BBC London News, Brussels. Still to come.